Just imagine how big of a headline this would have been if we lived in a democratic country where the media and online bloggers weren't intimidated by endless arrests and lawsuits every time they exercised their freedom of expression and freedom of media in matters concerning the government. A picture of the First Lady taken on the 1st of January 2024 when the President William Ruto was giving out his New Year speech has been making rounds online as it shows the First Lady with what appears to be a black eye. So while some are busy dissecting the president's speech, which let's be honest, many, my, um, including yours truly, <laughs> thought of it as nothing more than empty promises, others were quick to pick up on something else. Yeah, you guessed it, the first lady looking visibly distressed. But that's not all, there's more to this story. Upon closer inspection, Eagle-eyed Kenyans noticed that the first lady had some scars on her face. Talk about something unexpected. Ruto may not be a saint, but is he an abuser? Now, President Ruto in his first year as president has become very unpopular in Kenya, even to some of those who supported him. Owing but not limited to some of the following reasons. Top of the list, of course, is what he is most known for, which is overtaxing citizens, and also through the fact that he's appointed people with wanting criminal records in some of the highest positions in the country, and also the fact that he's disregarded the rule of law multiple times, for instance, by continuing with administering the housing levy, despite it being ruled unconstitutional by the Supreme Court, among many other things. If you're Kenyan, feel free to add more in the comment section. But that's a video for another day. Where I was getting to with this is that President Ruto to Kenyans like myself is not exactly a saint, but is it that bad? Who is this man behind closed doors? So let's put our detective hats on and try to dissect the situation. Given the high security setup that comes with being the first lady, it's a tough sell to say that she was mugged by some common thieves or gangsters. I mean, seriously, with all those guards around. So I would say that we rule, out, we rule that out as a conclusion that we will have otherwise arrived at. Also, some theories online floated around suggesting, you know, it could have been an innocent accident. Maybe she did, maybe she did take a tumble, but hold on. As realistic as it may be that the first lady is not immune to accidents, is it reasonable to conclude that it was an accident on one eye? Like, how does that even happen? Okay, maybe hit your eye while opening a window or cabinet, fair point. Except, that's not what it looks like. It looks like the kind of injury sustained by a blow. Like, when someone blows your face and you get a black eye, it looks like a black eye gotten, which typically comes from injuries. And then, um, injuries where you hit by someone rather and then there were those who made wild claims suggesting that it could be age related but let's be real here how does age lead to a black eye that just doesn't add up so naturally the collective speculation started leaning towards a more unsettling possibility domestic violence within the confines of her own home the state house it's a tough pill to swallow, but in the absence of any other convincing explanations, many Kenyans found themselves gravitating towards this rather grim conclusion. Some of the tweets that people posted included these ones that you can see on the screen right now. And one Twitter user said, I'm not insinuating anything, but those ain't childhood scars. And the tweet had a lot of replies and comment sections with some people agreeing and others not agreeing. But there were also other tweets like this one where they compared recent photos and said, stop um, gender-based violence. So that's the conclusion they came to as well. And then there's this one, is the first lady Rachel Ruto okay, where they noted as well physical, um, alterations in her appearance and then another twitter user also said um 
this must be a blow. I don't know, but I guess Nabi must have hit her or maybe an accident. And then these pictures speak volumes. We know abuse when we see one. First Lady Rachel Ruto was clearly battered. Look at those two faces belonging to the same person. Compare these two photos. First Lady Rachel Ruto is suffering in silence. These are not childhood marks indeed. Zakario is humiliating Rachel. GBV is real. And then we go on to see a number of Twitter users saying and expressing the same opinions. These are just a few of the ones I picked from Twitter. But there was a number and in fact it was trending yesterday as a number of Kenyans have actually arrived at the same conclusion. And may I just say at this point that I too would have dismissed this as another wild allegation had it not been for the fact that this is the second time this same news is making national headlines. Back in 2020, the hashtag Ruto the wife bitter was trending on Twitter when the then deputy president um, when he was then the deputy president and at the time he dismissed it as an attack by his opponents who were fueling a false narrative about him and to be fair i believe that it's possible for another politician to sell such a malicious narrative about another in the kenyan political scene except for this not so tiny detail cynthia mwikali Cynthia Mukali worked closely with the Ruto family back in 2020 as a staff in White Sands and as a personal steward for the First Lady. Now, here is where it gets chilling. Cynthia was suddenly let go from her duties under circumstances that raised more than a few eyebrows. We'll get into that in a few. And buckle up, just a few weeks after her being let go from her duties, tragedy struck and she was brutally murdered. So I stumbled upon a, a post from Citizen Weekly's Facebook account that sheds light on the aftermath of Cynthia's untimely demise. They managed to get an interview with some of Cynthia's family and there are some interesting allegations, um, interesting revelations, but of particular interest to me is what one of her cousins who opted to remain anonymous revealed. I'll read the post verbatim from where it's relevant and link the full post in the description box in case anyone wants to go and do some more digging. This is what her cousin had to say. The last time we talked, she disclosed to me that she was dead. She was the dedicated steward for Miss Rachel Ruto, Deputy President William Ruto's wife, and that nobody else was authorized to attend to her exclusive suit whenever she checked in. They had created a rapport, and Miss Ruto would often ask her to join in prayers when she arrived or when was when she was about to check out. She said, before leaving Mombasa, Cynthia had told me that things were awful for her. She had disclosed to a colleague that Mrs. Ruto was, going, was undergoing marital turmoil and that she was seeing a private physician to nurse injuries sustained during marital foods with the, with the deputy president. She had seen Miss Ruto cry many times and it had worn her out, prompting her to reveal this to her colleagues. When the word went out, she was immediately dismissed as Ruto's handlers protested, she added. The next paragraph is now what's even more interesting. Um, this is no longer a quote, this is from the words of Citizen Weekly. Shockingly, Cynthia's social media accounts have since been deleted. It remains unclear when and who would have deleted the accounts as her phone has remained off since 11th of May. Note that this post was taken um, at the time of death, so that was back in 2020 at the time when the death was still recent. When this writer made inquiries regarding this matter, the management declined to comment, citing that they have no missing employee. Hmm. I found this particularly interesting for many reasons, but the top one being that this means that whoever deleted her account deleted them after they killed her. And what could have been the motive? Why was it so important? for Cynthia's social media accounts to be deleted if whoever deleted them or ordered for their deletion did not suspect that it would have incriminating information with it. 
it just doesn't make sense and you know i watch a lot of um okay not a lot fairly a fairly good amount of um crime documentaries from the states and i really wish we had investigative journalists in our country that actually led to something like we'd find out oh this is who killed this person or like did actually bear fruits because it's just so unfortunate that most murders in kenya they just go like that like if we truly had a functioning system we'd at least be able to get justice for these victims and i just pray that for our country at the very least that we get functioning systems so anyways if the cynthia mccarley story is anything to go by it gives kenyans like me who would have otherwise chosen not to take this news seriously a very crucial context that leaves very little room for doubt because come to think of it what reason would a staff working in one of the highest office in the country have to lie if anything they would have more to lose so all in all if at all the speculations are true it's truly disheartening and i wish that ritual would walk away because a lot of Kenya in Kenyans enable such cultures even for women married and especially for women married in wealth because they think that they would rather suffer in wealth but the reality is your worth as a human being is not tied to material things and I hope this is something that we can start the year actually believing because otherwise it enables a culture of very many problematic things so no matter how much i am not politically in support of the first lady either i would never wish something like this on her so we do hope that the speculations are not true but if they are i guess we'll never know unless she speaks out and talks the truth which i have to say is highly unlikely nonetheless i hope you guys found this video valuable i'd like to hear your thoughts in the comment below and i look forward to engaging you with you in all my other videos see you next time bye